speeder bikes have arrived with the package and awaiting further instructions. Good morning, friends. Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Patreon, everything. All the friends here included. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Just uh, having Sunday my morning. first coffee in my first order mug. Um, a review on this particular blaster. It's an EC17, um, designed by myself. So, yeah, why do you review your own kit? No, that's not really what I'm doing. Um, I'm reviewing the electronics in there. Uh, I did a cooperation, uh, cooperation with uh, Paul Withrow from Trooper Amp, and he has this great blast fix kit, and I use a lot of them. But um, when I designed this blaster, I, I did it to go uh, go around the, the, the blast fix kit. So um, yeah, I wanted to make it as easy as possible, uh, much room as possible to include the electronics. Um, still some uh, features to, to uh, improve, um, like he uh, installed the on the off switch right there and the charge port that's right there. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to uh, install them also right there in, in the design. So it will be more easy for him next time or for somebody else who builds the kit himself to install this. Um, Oh, I yeah, I, I love uh, Blast Fix. It's, 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 it's pretty cool. Uh, tons of options. And uh, there was a review yesterday about uh, the same blaster by another dude. Uh, good video. And he went full throttle on the uh, cycle through the menu and show everything that's in there. Pretty awesome. So I'm not going to do that. Um, I just want to uh, thank uh, Paul Withrow, of course, for the great job he does uh, for this community. And I'm going to show you some of the images that he sent me um, during the build. But so you got a, a better idea how to install it yourself. And that's the main reason why I make this video. Um, I know Paul uh, has a couple of my kits um, laying there. So if you want one and, and have it installed by him, contact him. I will send uh, the, put the, the link down below. So uh, yeah. So further ado let, let's go into it and show you the electronics and um yeah before you uh, before we continue please like share and subscribe right um the power on and off switch right here on the side and it blends right in when you try to fire it whatever you will not see it and, and that's the whole purpose of the, the location right there and what is going on right now Ah, it was already on. Uh, silly me. That's not rocket science, is it? Right. Uh, first of all, I'm going to show you the, 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 the display in the scope. And I will turn off the light for that so you got a better view of it. There you go. Personally, I think uh, it would be better done without uh, the red lens. Because you got a more bright view to it. It makes it pretty dark, the red lens that's in there. But yeah, that's it's in a, a personal uh, preference. Too, so yeah. Right. A um, couple of fire modes. Oh, turn on the light again so you can see it better. There you go. That's a single mode. And in the scope there is a mechanical switch, so you can switch to a different fire mode. That's pretty cool, there's a pretty powerful LED there in there. Um, so yeah, and of course we got the stun mode. So, that's basically it, this is the... <clears throat> the setting for for the EC17, um, pretty basic uh, sound for 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 a boss of pistol like this. Um, of course, when when you enter the menu, you got tons of options. It's it's really fun to go through all them, but it it will make it too long of a movie like this. So I'm not going to do that. Yeah. Um, so the menu selector button is right here. 
and we made I made a little minimalistic trigger. It's really very small. It is it's, it's just from a distance you don't see it because the original EC17 doesn't have any trigger, and, and that's always the comment that we get. Oh, it doesn't have a trigger. Why do you put a trigger? You need to fire it, right? Uh, without it's not possible. So yeah, pretty min minimalistic. Uh, and if you really want it not uh, less than this, it's possible you can just file this down. That's no problem, but uh, you, you get ID. Um, there are some vents right here for, for, for the sound to circulate, or yeah, there's a battery in there, the electronics. So, um, yeah, I think it's a good idea, even with the, the power socket right here, that the, uh, the hot air needs to get out uh, if there's any air, um, just to be sure. Okay, and if you don't like them, uh, just, just fill them up. It's uh, it's up to you, of course. You can remove this this piece right here, this greebly. You can remove it, so you can enter it right there. Uh, of course, it's, it's completely uh, this, uh, you can completely dis dismantle it. Uh, the, the, the screws untie them. Uh, it, it's it's you good to go to go inside there. But I know Paul did a great job on, on including all the extras right in there, so there's not much room. So I guess he also shortened the wires and that kind of stuff and did it all custom work so um yeah when it's installed leave it like this don't don't try to tinker with it because uh, unless it's broken and you need to fix it but don't try to tinker with it because mm, on the way it's pretty fragile um so be careful and when it's good it's good never change your winning team so right um Quick kudos to uh, Paul, awesome dude, thank you very much, I love it, and um, yeah, the next segment uh, in this video will be uh, all the pictures that you sent me, and I will comment on them, and see if I can uh, clarify a couple of things in there, and, and change the model, and I will show the, that in the, in the video as well. So, thank you for watching, uh, on to the next segment of this video, um, like, share, subscribe, and uh, thank you very much. So here are the, the pictures that Paul sent me. Uh, this is the kit that he got from me. And uh, he has it laid out here and uh, the stuff that he uses in there. So you get a good idea of what's going in there. Now, a good tip of him, uh, use glass glue from Loctite to prevent fogging of the lens. It's always a big issue when I uh, was uh, gluing lenses and stuff. It's always, uh, yeah, get a white wash over it and that's uh, that sucks so uh, yeah glass locked tight works great and he has to uh, make some room for uh, the little speaker that he uh, added so it uh, fits right in there he used uh, a nice driller for that and uh, yeah it fits right in uh, small uh, package but uh, gives good good sound uh, to improve uh, the sound uh, a bit more, he uh, drilled a hole in there so it could escape right uh, properly. So uh, yeah, it amplifies uh, the sound extra. That's good. Um, assembling uh, of uh, the trigger switch. Uh, it's uh, pretty easy to do. Uh, just uh, glue it in, in place on the right spot. Uh, again, be careful what kind of glue you use. Uh, same goes for uh, the menu selector. Uh, he drilled a hole in there. Uh, and I will uh, model it uh, the way that uh, it will fit right in. So that's cool. Um, adding the main board. Uh, just, uh, he's just dry assembling everything just to see if everything fits in right there. Uh, that's uh, the, the battery pack. It's, uh, I believe, an uh, 1100 milliamp, uh, 3.7 volts battery. So uh, yeah, that's uh, the charge board that he's going to uh, put in there. He is drilling a, a nice hole there. So uh, the connector can fit right in and it blends right in the model. Of course, uh, the on and off switch had to be drilled uh, in position. So uh, yeah, he did it too. And I will add that everything in, in, in the next model. So I will modify it for you guys so it's more easy to do. And that's why uh, I like to work together with Paul. We're always working to uh, improve stuff, so uh, that's cool. Now well, that's uh, on the switch. No. Uh, that is the, the, the scope display. Uh, I made a, a nice round plate, so it fits right in. So it will, it's easier to install, but uh, I will make it more even more easy uh, with adding a new part for that. 
a uh, thing that I often leave out is the the vibration uh, pill, but uh, he put it in there, and uh, yeah, I have to admit it's uh, it's good. So uh, uh, here's the installing the display, and uh, there's a little uh, uh, space there, so you can can put a little bit to the left to the right to adjust as well. Uh, what you can see here, by the way, he used pretty little glue just to make sure in case it is off, whatever he can remove it again. Uh, here he is installing uh, all the the wires and connecting the, the, the charge board with the battery. That's uh, nice and, uh, and easy, fits well. Awesome job, I love uh, how he does that. He's uh, very precise. It looks great. And uh, yeah, this is the 1100 milliamp battery, 3.7 volts. Uh, uh, Google it yourself if you wanna buy it, of course, it's, uh, or ask uh, Paul if he has a good link for you. Uh, as you can see, uh, there goes a lot of uh, stuff in there, that little blaster, so uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty tight. Uh, a lot of wires, boards, battery switches, everything, it's, it's uh, 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 yeah, a good good package. And as you can see, there's not much space, so he has to include everything there. It uh, looks pretty messy, but uh, it's, it's pretty uh, good worked out and uh, yeah, uh, very well thought through. So uh, now he's assembling everything, putting everything in place, uh, make it uh, nice and tight. So everything uh, goes in there. Uh, he adds a uh, high power LED. Uh, first he tried another LED, but uh, this still has the function of uh, yeah, all the options of the, 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 the single and uh, automatic and uh, stun mode. Now here he's installing the mechanical switch. Um, yeah, yes, to fill the, the space up so it will fit right in. But uh, for that, I'm going to design a nice uh, mechanical switch hub so it will fit right in and uh, no extra work will be needed. So that's pretty cool. Well, put it everything together and uh, you got the final result. Hi there. Uh, in this segment, I'm going to uh, adjust the files for uh, a more and easy uh, compatible uh, set for PlusFix. So it will be easy to install, uh, easier, it's not easy, you need some skills for it. Um, here I'm going to uh, add the port for the, the charge unit of the battery, so the connector can just slide right in there. Just measured uh, the modifications on my own uh, blaster that uh, Paul did for me, so he makes it really easy for me. And I'm going to make it easy for him. Uh, the files will be uh, available at my uh, website, 3 Go uh, look at the 3D files uh, tab and uh, you will find the EC17 there pretty soon. Uh, so you can print it yourself. Um, the blaster in the in the, the previous uh, segment was uh, PLA printed uh, on the FDM printer, but uh, it's very good to print this also on a resin printer, so for much prettier the details and of course it will be less work to to deal with um, minor sanding of course so yeah that's a consideration to see what, uh, what you're going for are you going to for resin or you're going for PLA or ABS whatever so uh, of course uh, PLA and ABS is way stronger than resin but uh, yeah the post processing uh, is, is way more you need a lot of sanding to get rid of the, the print lines. I'm going to add um, the on and off switch right there. I have this uh, pre-made switch uh, for uh, when I did the, the new Hexler. It's also BlastFix compatible. Um, I will just uh, kind of sunk it uh, right in there. And when you get the, 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 the switch that comes with the kit, you need to uh, cut off the, the screw holes and file, it, file them down so it fits right in there. It's a, yeah, a little obstacle that you have to remove. Be careful with gluing this in, in, in place. Uh, use a uh, rubber-like glue um, and when you use a super glue it, it's uh, use a gel one because if you use the high liquid uh, super glues, it will probably go 
into the switch and will lock the switch forever. So be careful when you do that. Uh, hot glue is an option, um, of course, but uh, yeah, go for a gel-like uh, glue. Next is the menu uh, selector. Also, uh, yeah, I made that a W uh, for my Hengsler. Uh, couple of months ago so uh, it's pretty easy uh, to reuse it the, the size is all uh, the same as uh, from the blast fix kit so uh, yeah I don't think uh, Paul will change them very soon so uh, we're good and when that is uh, Carlos song then uh, you can simply repeat the same uh, thing as with the, the on and off switch just carefully glue it in place be mindful of what kind of glue you use because stuck is stuck you can reduce it next uh, do a couple of extra uh, modifications um, I will change uh, there will be an, um, a mechanical switch hub in the scope itself um, Paul did um, uh, fill up the, the, the space between uh, the bottom of the scope and uh, the top uh, to, to uh, fix the mm, the switch in place but uh, I made a little hub there so it's more easy to go um, scope knob uh, the adjustment knob is, is uh, I uh, hollowed it out uh, with a 6 millimeter rod so it fits right over the the end of the, the, the mechanical switch okay with the uh, knob finished you can put it right in place and uh, the hub will uh, be perfect uh, combination with uh, the knob for the mechanical switch that's uh, the display hub and you just you can uh, slide it right in there on the other side of the scope not this side and uh, it's uh, made to uh, to house the, the display for the scope um, if you uh, just guide uh, the wires through uh, to the scope you can uh, solder it back on nice and easy and uh, lock it in place make sure that it's aligned well um, some lenses tend to flip the image so before you glue it in place or put it in place make sure it is aligned well um, you might have to switch it 180 degrees to get the image right and if you don't use a lens but just an uh, yeah an acrylic uh, transparent then, then you don't have that issue and if you look uh, inside the the ring the the hub there are two little knobs and with that you can adjust uh, to the left or to the right so you get uh, the image straight uh, good aligned so yeah uh, hollowing out the the front of the single point scope for extra room and I do the same with the cone it's a hollow down one so you just glue it together for a perfect fit that's uh, the new uh, eyesight ring um, the easy thing of this is that uh, it is a little bit hollowed out uh, made space for uh, the, the lens and the transparent insert so uh, yeah it will create some extra distance between the display and between the, the lens so uh, it will magnify more um, yeah that's an issue normally the, the the lens I believe Paul uses have an ideal distance of 40 millimeters now it will be about 25 but will still magnify a little bit so that will be cool so uh, that's it get your file 3dprops.com check for the 3d file section and uh, thanks for watching bye bye